Welcome back to Arcade Body Shop. We are continuing with the Q-Bird. Uh, you saw us do all the other work in episode two where we got all this brand new wood on. Well, that's my roosters making noise, man. But this is rock solid now. It had time to dry overnight. Now what we want to do first is we're going to go ahead and sand down any edges. We did a great job. Like you can barely feel it, but you can feel it. So we want to go ahead and get this all smoothed out. Same thing where it matches here. We'll do it on every seam that we did. And I'm just using the orbital sander, uh, random orbital sander, and I'm using 120 grit. Uh, this piece right here is the one side that we saved. It had MDF on it. I just, it was a little mushy, so I let it sit with the clamp and uh, some liquid hardeners. Just wanted to make sure that that uh, hardened up. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put a new disc on here, and then we'll go ahead and start sanding all this flat, and we'll get ready to do some Bondo. All right, we got our disc on. We're going to go ahead and sand this all down nice and smooth. We don't really need to sand this wood. This is nice, fresh factory uh, finish. What we're trying to do is just knock down any edge or discernible where you can feel a difference between the actual cab and uh, and the actual uh, new piece of wood. So this is actually feeling pretty good. I'm going to go over it a little bit more. Then I'm going to go down this side and hit this little corner. We're off by like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and I can just do a, a little light, light coat of uh, bondo right here to make up the difference on that. And then uh, we'll square up the edges, make sure everything matches easy, but uh, we'll finish this up first. <laughs> pretty good and we just have this real like I, I you'd be hard-pressed to get a piece of paper in this in this joint right here that's how tight we got it um, so we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna go up here and just make sure this is nice and level we have not cut the T molding uh, groove into the new piece yet we'll do that a little bit later <laughs> Like I said, we got this little tiny stair step, maybe a sixteenth of an inch right there. But uh, we'll coat that with just a little touch of Bondo and then touch it up, you won't even see it. And then this side's pretty good. Got a little fuzzies on here, but this one factory side was actually really, really good. We'll, we'll address that last. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and flip this on its side and we'll tackle the, uh, the big side seam next. Uh, same thing with this one. All we're doing is just cleaning up this transition. Like I said, I can feel a little bit maybe less than a sixteenth of a ridge right there and what we're going to do is just make sure it's nice and flat for our bondo to stick to so we're just going to sand this flat <laughs>
when you're doing this, your old cabinet will actually help you out a lot because as you can see, all this is coming off, so this and this is at the same height, but as you see, I got this nice yellow line right across here. And what that's telling me is this still is not at the same level as this, otherwise that paint would be gone. So we want to go ahead and try to bring it down to where that whole paint line's gone, and then we got a cabinet that's just blended into one another. And then we do a quick skim coat of uh, Bondo on this, it ain't going to take much, and then uh, this will be all seamed up and ready to paint. <laughs> Instead of doing our uh, Craig joints and everything, really pulled it tight together. The glue sealed it up, and uh, this, you know, is almost seamless. I can't really feel it. Uh, there's a little high bump right here I'll probably knock down, and then we'll come on this back edge right here, and then we'll go ahead and flip it on the front. I'll finish this up, guys, and then I'll flip it, and we'll do the, uh, the back side, and then we'll be ready for Bondo. Went ahead and got the cabinet flipped over again, and now we're going to just go ahead and uh, smooth out this back. This back had the widest gap of all. Um, this one side was a little wanky, but it's nice and square, as you can see, so we're good there. We just might have to do a little more Bondo and a little more fading with the sander right here, but it'll look like brand new once we're done. <laughs>
this back over here is the original side where it's kind of flared out I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that down and then uh, before we paint I'll probably hit this with some liquid hardener just to make sure that doesn't flake up pretty good about that uh, it's nice and smooth the gap is a little bit wider uh, than on the front but two things a it's on the back so nobody's gonna notice it and two you're never gonna see it once we go ahead and fan uh, the Bondo because we'll fan it in about an inch each way and then smooth it all out with 220 before we paint it and it will just be gone it will look like one solid piece so I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for Bondo and we'll start doing that we're all set up to do some Bondo and woo Look at the size of that can of Bondo. Um, I know I say it all the time, man, but Harbor Freight, look out, man, because you get discounts and stuff. Bondo's expensive, and uh, I got this whole big one-gallon like paint can for, I think it was like 19 bucks, but then I had a 20% off coupon, so I got it for like, I think 14 and change. And, uh, you know, this absolutely has to be in your toolbox if you're going to be doing uh, restorations on cabinets and stuff. Um, you know, you can't really use like drywall mud. It will crack. And then, uh, you know, anything like that because, you know, the cabinets expand and contract. I mean, this is made for cars to be outside in the sun. And then in the winter, it's made so it won't crack. So it's really the perfect material for, you know, filling in gaps and uh, imperfections and such. So uh, I got this big old can. We're not going to need nearly this. Maybe, uh, maybe a golf ball size to do this area, if that. And then it comes two-part liquid hardener. Um, you guys can Google Bondo how to set it up. I'll, I'll just show you what I do with it. And I uh, got uh, these Bondo scrapers. You can get these like $2. Um, AutoZone or, or Pep Boys or any of those type places will have these. And they just make a nice, nice uh, smooth edge. And you got three different sizes to work from. Uh, this is the one I use most of the time. And when I do a big seam, then I'll go up to the middle one. And uh, the cool thing with these is... The Bondo, when it dries, you can just bend it and it comes right off and then you got it all brand new again. So let's go ahead and get started. And I figured it's only fitting as a mixing palette. I wiped this off with some simple green. I got the uh, busted piece that we cut out. So we'll just, we're throwing this out anyways. Let's just mix on it and we'll open this up and we'll get some Bondo. Heck, we can probably use what's just on the lid to do this area. So let's do that. Let's get some off the lid. Put it right there. That's probably enough right there. Uh, we'll go a little more, just in case. This is just the lid drippings anyways. So we'll go ahead and put it up there. And that part won't do anything until you put the actual liquid hardener into it. So we'll get the big old can out of the way. It's a nice heavy paperweight too. That thing's probably about 10 pounds. Alright, so what you want to do is for, you know, golf ball size, you want just a little dab. You don't really need a whole lot. Like that pretty much will be enough. And you put too much in, it will harden too quick. And you got to watch out in the summertime because, you know, especially where I live, I live right outside of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, temperatures are just insane. And this stuff hardens in like seconds. But today's not bad. It's about 80 degrees. And you just want to go ahead and get it mixed up real nice. And 
get a nice even application. And what I'm going to do is fill the groove first, just come across it. I just want to fill that gap all the way around. And this might take two coats because it will suck in a little bit. But all we're looking to do right now is just fill that gap. And then these gaps on this side too. And then what we'll do is we'll just take it and we'll make a nice smooth transition all the way down. Scrape it off. The same thing on this edge. Nice transition. And the key is you want to try to get, you don't want that. There you go. You don't want to go too, too heavy, you don't want to go too light. And all these little goops of it, you want to try to get those off because they will be insane to try to get off later. So this is good for, uh, for uh, first scoop. Like I said, we used way more than we really needed to. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. And um, you know what, we could probably flip this on its side and we'll work on the, the side while this dries. We can't do the front until this is completely dried. And then um, we'll come back and we'll sand this and then, uh, and then we'll see if we need another skim coat or, or not. So. We'll go ahead and uh, stop here for a second. We'll flip it and we'll work on the big gap on the side. All right, we got this side. This is the biggest one, the full on thing. This feels really nice. Like there's no, there's no discernible thing and the, the um, actual mark is so thin. Went ahead, got a little more Bondo out here. I'm just gonna put a little dab of the red on there. So we hardened up pretty quick last time. So I'm just gonna put a little drop like that. We'll go ahead and mix it in and then we'll squish it into that crack and uh, we'll fan it out after that and uh, this hardener's uh, red I've seen blue um, just whatever it is it, when it once it mixes with the gray it will turn almost like pink and then you know you're ready so you're pretty good right there and like I said you don't want to go far maybe about an inch each way when you're running low, just get some more on there. You're just trying to get the material on and down into the actual uh, space between. And just move at a steady space. If you, if you get the mixture right on the hardener, you don't, you don't have to rush, rush, but I mean, you got probably a couple minutes. So we're just fanning this out. And then what I'll do is I'll come from one edge I'll just do it nice and smooth all the way down. Get rid of the excess and we'll come back the other way. I'll try to get this little scratch out of here. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can sand it down. And uh, that's it. That's all we're going to do right there is just that one little coat. And I want to let this harden up and we'll see how that in the back looks. And then we'll give it a good sanding. And then we'll see if we need to go a little second coat. Normally what I do is I try to concentrate right towards the center. Then I feel with my hand. If I feel a transition, then I'll go just a little bit wider and just feather it out. And then when we sand it, we'll sand it with 220 to just give it that baby smooth transition. So we're going to let this harden up for a little bit and we'll come back and uh, we'll see how it goes. I went ahead and let this dry for about an hour. While I was doing that, I went around the cab and just sanded it. I, I actually uh, busted out the heat gun, took off the decal on the side because uh, Tim, who owns this cab, he said he wanted to do it all brand new since we did such a good job at it. And what we're going to do now is this Bondo feels pretty hard. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and see how that seam feels. And then we'll go from there. And uh, I know you guys always bust on me about the uh, face mask. I am wearing one, okay? So we got one, I'm outside, it's well ventilated. Just like I said, I'm just muffled when I got this on, you can't hear me. So here we go. <laughs>
went ahead and I knocked that down. Still using the 120. Uh, brought a bunch of the uh, the heavier spots out. Um, it feels pretty good, man. I, I'm going to go ahead and drop down to like 220 now. And then we'll just keep feathering this out and see if, how smooth we can get the transition. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed another uh, disc. We're dropping down to 220 grit now. And this will really just smooth out. Um, the cool thing with Bondo is you can actually see where I'm hitting where I'm not. Like this was a high spot. I took it down. That's why it's so bright. This darker area down the ridge, we still really haven't hit yet. So what I'm planning to do now is we're just going to fan it and make sure this seam is nice and smooth. Then we'll look down it and make sure that uh, everything is straight. And uh, we might need one more super thin skim coat if this sucked in a little bit. It's looking pretty good. We might not need to, but we'll, we'll get to that point. that's feeling pretty good I can't really tell I can't really tell any discernible transition between the two which is fantastic um, I think this is good to go for this side you know what you want to do is make it almost look translucent where it meets the actual cabinet like it's it's there you can feel how smooth it is but it's there's no ridge you can't feel anything so um, there's a possibility we might have to hit this again once we uh, get some primer on it. Primer shows everything. But I think for the pre, I think we did a pretty good job here. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and do the back and the front. Uh, no need to have you guys watch me sand stuff for another hour. So I'm going to get those done and then we'll move on to uh, primer and uh, hopefully painting this thing. So yeah, it's looking good. So let me get uh, let me get finished sanding here, and uh, I'm gonna do the bondo on the front. We already went over that on two sides, and then uh, we'll come back and start covering the basics of primering. We're on to the next day now. I got everything all sanded, and now's the moment of truth, guys. We're gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna start with the back. We're gonna paint the black. I'm not gonna primer this because it's black. It should cover pretty well. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is get a brush and go ahead and pre-coat all my seams and like I said we, we might end up having to do one more coat but I'm not thinking so especially on the back so I'm, I'm spreading it nice and thick on that seam just to give it like a pre-coat so it will hide it I also want to get inside the speaker grill here and inside this little area up top but yeah guys we're in the home stretch 
this thing was a mess. But by the end of this episode, it should be looking pretty pretty. Or prettier, I guess, would be the correct term. Just getting the edges and the corners here. Anything that we got to do with the brush. And then, I think it's time to go ahead and roll this guy. Let's see how this back looks. This is the exciting part. You, all the work that you do is all up to this point. Like, this is what it's all about. Getting it to the point where you have a finished product. So, go ahead and give them a nice coat to these back edges as well. It's looking pretty good, guys. Pretty good. Just kind of trying to roll over that seam. Get that edge. What do you think? I'm liking it. Starting to look like a factory fresh cuber to me. God, remember this when we first started? The, the whole bottom of it was three quarters of an inch thick. Well, it's supposed to be three quarters of an inch. It was actually two inches thick. pretty good for a first coat. I really don't see the line. What I see is just the difference between the texture of the original wood and the new wood. But I think we're going to lose that once we get a second or third coat on this. Um, so, you know, that, that should disappear. I'm not worried about that. And again, guys, this is the back. I mean, you know, you're not going to be staring at this. Even the sides, I mean, most, most of the time you got your games jammed between other games in a row. So, you know, the big thing is making the cabinet solid again, but it's even more fun when you make it look pretty. So, we're going to get it as perfect as possible. Like I said, all I see is the texture difference between the two wood, the old and the new. And uh, once we get another coat of uh, paint or two on there, I don't even think you're going to see it anymore. What do you guys think? I think we're looking good. All right. So there's the black, and then what we're going to do now is go around to the front, and I'm going to go ahead and tape off the original um, front piece because I was able to save that. Uh, just cleaned it up with some magic eraser and some rubbing alcohol, and it came up really clean. So I think we're going to leave that as is, and we'll let this dry. We'll go around front. We'll get a good uh, first coat to the front, and then uh, we'll start primering the sides and getting ready to do the uh, cuber yellow. All right, now we're up front on the business end. Uh, I actually, I was able to save this front artwork, man. It's a little cracked down here, but I say keep it original. Um, all I used was some magic eraser and some just, uh, you know, 91% rubbing alcohol. And it just took all the grime and the grit off it. And I can probably do it one more time. And then, um, believe it or not, I actually use uh, tire shine, like what you spray on tires. And it just puts new life into it. It makes it feel newer and it seals it quite a bit. Um, so I might clean it up just one more time when we're all done, um, but I, I suggest to Tim, you know, hey, let's keep it. It looks great. So, uh, you know, I like to keep as much original on these things as possible. Um, the side art, you know, we're doing it all full on, and he wanted it to look super sexy from the side, and it was cut up and everything. But uh, this, I really think we're good to go on that. It looks, it looks really nice. So what I'm going to do is get my brush. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut down this edge right here on the inside. Make sure that we got it. We still gotta cut our T-molding groove. Probably should have done that beforehand, but it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. As long as we're not scraping up our side once it's all painted. Just might have to come back and touch it up with some paint. Go ahead and get this inside groove. Yeah, man, I don't mind working on MDF cabs. I mean, sometimes they're easier to fix, uh, you know, using the liquid hardener and, and such. And, 
you're definitely able to shape it a lot easier because you're essentially working on cardboard, you know, big, thick, giant cardboard. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead like I did last time and coat my Bondo line. This is the, this is the business right here because this face is the public. So all your work will show right here if it's not right. I think we're going to be okay, man. So let's go ahead and start getting some coating on it. Back a little bit. All right, let's roll it out. Now this is just a, a foam um, cabinet roller is what they call them. I normally buy them in like a pack of six. Uh, get them from Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, you can spray spray it. I don't really, I've never sprayed a cab. You know, I don't I don't have like a, I think it's called an HLV sprayer. I don't have one. Um, possibly, uh, I'll get one uh, soon and then maybe we'll learn it together. We we'll go ahead and hit the top of this coin box too in here. Get those coin holes. And look brand new. God, this thing has come a long way though, hasn't it, guys? Like I've, I've said from the beginning, especially you know with my cabinets getting trashed in the in the flood and everything, which actually this weekend is the one-year anniversary of the big flood. Had an awesome house on the river. We lost the whole thing, man. So we moved out to the country on 10 acres, nowhere near water at all. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm about probably 25 miles away from the beach now. Oh man, look at this front. I do not see anything. I don't even see a line. It's always good to paint the, the uh, front of the cabinets, um, whatever you plan on doing with the uh, black works 99% of the time. but. You know, paint the front so if you got any T molding that's peeking or wood peeking through underneath the T molding, you won't see it because it's all black. But God, look at this, guys. That looks sexy. Factory fresh, brand new. You know, if you want to do this hobby and you want to do it on the cheap, this is what you got to learn how to do, guys. You got to be willing. To put in the time, take the cabinets that other people are going to throw away, and you know, I mean, what, what's a cuber going for? Fully restored now, fifteen hundred, you know, fifteen, seventeen hundred, something like that. Uh, he got this cabinet for a hundred bucks, you know, and and then he found another, just totally destroyed cabinet. Uh, yeah, I would even be pressed. This, I think he could save it, but it, it it would be even more work than this one because it looked like it sat out in the rain for about two or three years. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll get Tim to give me that cabinet, and we'll we'll see we'll see what we do with that. But but what I'm saying is, if you want to do this hobby on the cheap, you can find your dream game. It's out there, you know. Whether it was converted to some crappy game that nobody wants, and then you can attain it that way, or um, you know, which it comes back to you know learning your cabinets and what they look like, and trying to find distinguishing features of each, you know. Because if you can do that, you can find some jewels, man, and gems, and bring them back to life, man. Don't let them go to a landfill, and don't let, you know, people, you know, it just blows my mind. Even people, you know, they'll cut a good side off a cabinet and put it up on the wall. You know what I mean? Like, if it's still got one good side, it's still got life in it, I think. You know, and it doesn't take a lot of tools. It doesn't take a lot of knowledge. Like, total, total time from start to finish on this was probably three days. I probably could have done almost all of it in one day if I had a full day to do it. And, um, you know, I literally just started collecting games about two and a half years ago. So, I, I mean, I was handy, but I wasn't doing this type of work. And, you know, there's so many people that can help. You know, there's other arcade, um, you know, web shows and, you know people on club and you know different Facebook groups I mean everybody's really willing to to help you out you just got to seek out the knowledge and you can figure it out for yourself so hopefully I'm helping you guys inspiring you at least to, 
to go for the gusto like we did on this one so all right i think that's good for first coat what do you guys think i don't see any lines man i think it looks really really good let's get it a little closer in there and let you guys see it yeah man we did a good job on that i'm telling you pulling those seams that tight and then just that skim coat of uh, bondo makes all the difference because this thing is looking night and day compared to what it is i already painted all the uh the black on the inside and stuff first coat um none of that stuff was damaged so it was just literally you know wiping it down and painting it cleaned up the cubert and i'll give you a close-up on that yeah I th that looks good enough don't you guys agree uh, that looks good enough um to be a survivor and then this front totally replaced the bottom what i think four inches we, we replaced on that and it looks good we got the side super smooth ready to go got the side art off i sanded down any of the rough spots and then here's our back over here we'll move around looks pretty good like uh, this one i literally i just see a little bit of a texture difference there's not actually a discernible line it's just a texture difference between the back which you know had a little bit of pitting and then the new piece that's super smooth but once we get a couple of more coats on there and the orange peeling takes effect uh, it's going to blend all that and you won't even see it anymore so and then this is the original side this is the one good side that was going to be wall art but it's not that bad i did a little bit of bondo down that bottom left corner i want to get a coat of primer on here first there's probably a couple other spots i i saw a couple like gouge type things on here that i wasn't happy with i just wanted to see how much primer would fill and then if uh if we have to we'll come back and hit it with bondo so all right we're gonna stop here i'm gonna let this dry go ahead and get another coat on it and then we'll start primer in the sides this kills paint is amazing it really really covers really well and i love it because it has such a thick it goes on so thick and you're able to sand it down and then if you got any minor imperfections it will actually get filled in with the paint and then once you sand it you won't see any of it anymore so What I'm going to do is, I, as I work my way down, just like I did with the black, I'm going to go ahead and do a coat of the white over the seam, just to give it a chance if it sucks in at all with the Bondo. Sometimes the Bondo sucks it in a little bit. There we go. And then we'll work our way down to that. And the key to using these foam rollers is you really, you want to cross the pattern just enough where it blends, but you want to try to do nice long strokes. And I actually got this longer one, uh, cabinet one, so I can go all the way from the bottom to the top fairly easy. And for this first coat, you just want to get everything covered and sealed nicely. trying to get a nice even coat over this whole thing and all those spots are they're going to show through for now until we get you know probably another two coats onto it this is just our base coat the binding coat
All right, so that's pretty good for the first coat. Uh, I know you can see the big line right there. That's just the Bondo sucking in the paint. Uh, it actually, if you're looking down at it, it's super, super smooth. So I think that's going to be perfectly fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and coat the other side and uh, give this a chance to dry, come back and hit it with a couple more coats, and then we'll get to the sanding process to get everything ready for the yellow paint. So that's coming up. Well, guys, that wraps it up for this episode. We got a lot done in this episode. We, uh, I sanded everything down. We got everything bondoed. We went ahead and repainted all the black. I scrubbed up this Cubert uh, front art. It looks amazing. I think we're going to keep this. I talked to Tim who owns it. Cannot even see the line on the front. It is so smooth and nice. This is the side we replaced. You can barely see the bondo. Like I said, the only thing that's still there is just the texture difference, which will disappear in the final coat. I got about four coats of primer on this thing right now. Just to put it in perspective, guys, this was that side. This is what we cut off right there. So this was that side right there. Totally blown out. Look at the edge. Just horrible. Just garbage now. We can get rid of that. And uh, it looks like a brand new cabinet. It really does. You know, we took our time. We did the biscuit joints. We did all those things. Um, this video, we pretty much covered all the prep and the bondo and just getting it ready to paint. Now I got about four coats of uh, primer on this. There's a couple little tiny dings I want to hit with Bondo. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I uh, also want to go ahead and uh, get this whole thing sanded down with 320 grit to give it like a just a smooth Formica finish. And then uh, let's just take a look around it. Let's, let's grab you guys. And we'll check out our work, man. So the whole inside of the cabinet's all painted black now. The top's all done. Cubert, we freshened that up. I think it's gonna be fine. There's a couple small cracks in there. Cannot even see the part we replaced. This is the side that was good originally. Like I said, there's a couple things I saw. Some things you don't see until the primer. Like right here, there's a couple dings. I'm gonna sand those down and go ahead and hit those with uh, Bondo. And then there's one more down here. Where is it? Yeah right around there and uh, we're just gonna get that all but the edges the edges look nice and sharp I sanded those down everything looks really really good coming around back our back looks real nice you can see all the woodwork we did inside brand new bottom and got the new replacement panel and here's the replacement panel on this side looking fantastic so alright guys we're gonna stop it for here this thing's got to go ahead and cure overnight at least before I sand it so we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, it's looking pretty amazing, guys. Thanks for sticking uh, through this one with me. I know it's been a long series, but we did a lot of work in a short amount of time. And it just proves, man, pretty much any game can be saved. So until next time, I'll have the, uh, the final episode of this pretty soon. And then this cabinet's going to uh, its home, man. It sucks. I'm building two cubits and I don't even have one. So that's how it goes when you're a restorer. So we'll catch you next time right here on Arcade Body Shop. <laughs>